Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Thanks to Wizards, I have early access, a sneak peek of the new set, March of the Machines, and there's a lot of cool cards from this set and a brand new card type, Battles. So I wanted to see how good these battles actually are, so we're building a battle deck. Um, so let's take a look at battles. We got a number of the, the deck. So looking at Invasion of Chandelar. So this is five mana on the front side. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you get an ability. So all these battles kind of give you an ability when they enter the battlefield. So this one lets us return three target permanent cards from our graveyard to our hand. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, there is a four, almost similar to like a planeswalker loyalty ability. When it enters the battlefield, it goes to the opponent's side of the battlefield and you can attack this or deal direct damage with things like lightning strike, stuff like of that nature. Once you deal that requisite damage to effectively kill it in the same sense, of like a planeswalker you get to it flips and you get to cast it for zero mana the flip side so in this case ley line surge uh, we get at the beginning of our upkeep we get to put a permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield so uh like i said we are playing a battle deck and we are going to give it a shot so we have invasion of tarkir so this is two mana uh enters battlefield we can reveal dragons from our hand we're not playing dragons but it's basically a two mana lightning bolt or two mana shock that also then has the upside of flipping into a uh, dragon, a flying trample 4-4 that deals 2 damage upon attack for each dragon. Uh, we have Invasion of Ixalan that looks at the top 5 cards of our library. We reveal a permanent. The battles are all permanents. Uh, same with land, so it could find pretty much everything in our deck. Put one in our hand, rest of the bottom of your library. When we deal the 4 damage, uh, it becomes a trampler. Whenever you cast a spell, it, be, it gains indestructible until end of turn, 4-3. Um, Blood Tithe Harvester, we got Blood Tithe Kiki Harvester kind of combo. Uh, still just very good, so we're going to be playing that. I wanted an aggressive uh, two drop that can also attack into battles. We have Invasion of Asgol, so this is two mana for uh, battle, loyalty, whatever we want to call it, siege. Uh, enters the battlefield, opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, and they lose a life. When it flips, you get a 2 1 menace. That your end step, if a permanent was put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, it gets a 1 1 counter. Then we have Invasion of Ergamon, 2 mana, 5 loyalty siege counters. Uh, whenever Invasion enters the battlefield, create a treasure token, then you may discard a card if you do draw a card. And then when it flips, becomes a 3 4 trampler that you, you can discard a card. If you do, you search your library for a land or battle, reveal it, put it into your hand. As such, we're playing a couple 1 of battles. It was an Invasion of Chandelar as well as Invasion of Innistrad. The Invasion of Innistrad's basically tragic slip without the revolt ability. Uh, so flash, target creature gets minus 13. And then when it flips over, we get a uh, an enchantment that 2-2 two, two zombies, and then we can exile creatures from the graveyard. Exile cards from the graveyard. If it's a creature, we get a 2-2 two, two zombie token. Um, so the ways to kind of get the counters off, we have Glissa, which when it deals combat damage, because normally you have to decide, are we going to attack the face? And this is something we want to see in these games. Is it worthwhile to divert your damage to these battles as opposed to the face? But Glissa lets you remove counters when it deals damage. So you can remove those counters, still attack the face, and then remove those counters. Similarly, we have Questing Beast Dino, Rampaging Raptor, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, Trample Haste. For 3 mana, you can give it plus 2 power till end of turn. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker, or battle that player protect. So another way to kind of do that. And then lastly, we got a couple Overgrown Pests. I'm interested to see how this card works out. It's another card that we can copy with Kiki, but it's a three mana, look at the top five cards of your library. It either finds us a land or it finds us a double-faced card. We look at our double-faced cards, it's all the battles, it's Reflection of Kiki, and it's also this new Shieldred that I'm interested in trying out. So Shieldred, five mana, Menace, four, five. Uh, the stat line of Shieldred, making Mono Red cry. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. And then for 5 mana, you can exile Shieldred, return it to the battlefield transformed under its Saga side, but you can only do this if an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. When you flip the Shieldred, uh, each opponent, for each opponent to up to 1 target creature or planeswalker, then they discard 3 cards and mill 3 cards, and then you get to mass reanimate all creatures from all graveyards, and then it flips back to Shieldred. So there's a lot of the, all, all the Praetors got these kind of flip ones with various conditions, so... That is it. We are going to give it a shot and see how this game plays out. Um, and yeah, so with this, it's early access. It's just best of one standard. The intent is to have fun. 
So we are going to let games kind of go through, um, and really it's to kind of showcase the new cards. There might be some, like, you notice we didn't include the old Shieldred, which will likely find a spot in, like, most of these Jun decks, but we want to see how it kind of goes. Um, if you do enjoy this type of content, uh, I am trying to get to 10,000 subs on YouTube. Uh, we're just over 8,000, so greatly appreciate it if you could drop a, uh, a follow, free and easy. And as a general note, um, I am donating every single penny I make from YouTube this month uh, to a Toronto-based food bank. So if you're interested in helping out, uh, you can always um, just uh, watch any of the videos, anything of that nature. Um... I kind of want to find a land next turn, so I think we discard the second invasion. Okay, cool. So we see Thalia. You're a 2-2. Two, two. So it's probably... So I can get Fable going earlier, but given that all our deck gets taxed to hell by Thalia... I think we just kill it. Next turn I can cast Fable. Even what I can do is I can Fable, loot stuff, and then do Invasion of Chandelar. Um, I think we just do Fable here. So we're going to try to find a dino here. I think a dino attacking in would be nice. Asking you will receive. Um, given we have... So we're going to want to keep this for afterwards with the Kiki. This can help us find a land. I could just go dino here. So they can just eat the the smaller one, so it's not really worth it. We'll attack in here, see what they want to do. If they do double block. We can just trade. I think that's a fair trade for us. We get two of their creatures off the battlefield, and then I'll have Kiki to flip. I can also use this Invasion of Chandelar now to get back uh, a land, the Raptor, and Invasion. Okay, so they're like Naya Legends with the with the big one. So we're going to wait till next turn because I will obviously want to use the Reflection of Kiki here. Um, so I could use Invasion to find something. I think we're just going this turn... I'm going to get back Raptor. Probably just the gas. No, I probably still want to hit line drops. No attacks this turn. So next turn I have Kiki active. I can also copy... So I can kill their things. Halana and Alana is scary. Especially because this has Vigilance now. It's going to make attacking quite difficult. Let's take the damage. They also have the Skrelv, which is quite annoying. So I can go with the dino. I th think we need to find... I guess I can do this. Kill Skrelv. Now they have to decide what they want to protect. They probably protect the Hazard. And then what I can do is Harvester. I 
Make a copy, kill Halana and Alana. And then just pass turn next turn if they don't kill. Then I can blood tithe the Dejero, kill it, and then I can also play out the Raptor and then start getting some value. We do want to get this going because then I get to free cast stuff from my hand. Oh shit. Well that's a dino. That's terrifying. So, opponent went pretty big on us. Okay, so Glissa is nice. Um, I think we gotta kill this. Is this when it attacks? I want to do that so that way I can try to trade in combat. Um, we're going to take the invasion here because it could let me kill this Galta. I think we're dead regardless. Yeah. Okay, so that game, we got it going, but their stuff was a lot bigger. So we're going to give it another shot. What we might want to do is lower the curve. And one thing that was suggested was Monastery Swift Sphere, just being able to attack in. What we weren't able to with that game is like we got the value out of these. Um, but we weren't pushing damage. And like some of these more expensive ones might be too situational. Um, we might want to lower and get a higher creature density. Even stuff um, like Tenacious Underdog, uh, anything of that nature could be interesting, but we'll give it a couple more. And looks decent. Blend the Nerdy Steve. So, a couple options for turn two. Hopefully no Thalia. Okay, so we see the battle on their side. So I think I want a ramp here. Find our land, I can go Kiki next turn, get that going. And also just go Raptor. I think I want to like surprise that out. Also have Blissa as an option, but I think we just do this for the turn. Because I'm not flipping it. If I would have been able to flip it, I would have done it. Obviously, if we went Invasion that turn, it would have worked. But they could have blocked still, got a little bit of value. Okay, see so Ossification come down. They took our Dino! I think we discard both of these. I 
I'm gonna hold for the turn because I can just hard cast this next turn. I should have played this land instead. But depending what they do, I can also, like if they have another ossification. We're gonna do this. They'll get a land. They could potentially cast something. So get them to sacrifice this Elspeth. They're called defense counters. We could potentially get Wandering Emperor here, but I think it's fine. Obviously, the one land that we misplayed. Um, I think we do this. Get to Turga, discard the land. What's in our graveyard right now? I can't get Shieldred. I th think we just get... Invasion of Chandelar. I want to say it's probably just the, the Tarkir here. I can ping one of their creatures or something. We'll deal the damage here. They could Wandering Emperor put counters on it. But then I have this invasion that also works. Yeah. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Remember your training. So they let that go. I th think... I think we still keep this. And... Probably... Just getting the dragon going. <sighs> Three wandering emperors. You started this fight, but I'm going to end it. Strike fast and strike hard. So we can invasion of Innistrad, kill their creature. Might be a ganjo. But I think we got a block there. Oh my god, four! 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 
four wandering emperors. You know what I say to four wandering emperors? Dinos! Kill you. Get you. Still have much to learn. Now these dragons get to deal damage. It should be GG's. Alright, that felt sweet. I think the top end's kind of like garbage. Um and I think these three drops, like I think we just want to be a bit lower to the ground. We're having trouble actually like pushing through damage. So I think if we look like the invasion of Chandelar is probably not good enough, nor are these overgrown pests. Um, if we look at aggressive creatures, like we can go Swift Spear, Swift Spear gets bigger, we can go Phoenix Chick, Phoenix Chick we could loot. Um, there's Evolve Sleeper, but our mana's pretty like contained each turn. It might just be um, Trespasser. Play a couple copies here, it's also good as a 3 drop. Because we got a lot of twos, we're not really playing on one. No, I think I, I think I want to try something in the one drop slot. We haven't really got to the Shieldred, but to be honest, this is probably not a Shieldred deck. We have other decks for Shieldred. Let's let's go with Swifty here. Interested to see if that plays out. Any better? Alright. One and one. Base is kind of awkward, but I think we keep. We just need a, an untapped line. Ah, I see. Opponent bought, brought mono red. Untap lined. Untap line, please. Untap lined. You're not the untap lined I wanted for Christmas. So I think just given the pressure that I'm facing, I need to kill this. Next turn I can go Rampaging Raptor, attack in, I can go Fable, I can go Blood Tithe. I think we need to do this. It's not great because I just sacrificed the Phoenix, but it gives me like a better play this turn. Because then I can... They could pay three here. Oh, they just went like super aggro. Yeah, we need we needed a play on two. It 
again, not really anticipating too many folks on mono red aggro in this format. And obviously you can build the deck to be a bit more responsive. Usually in these events, I forego on a lot of removal. Um, likely where we'd want to be is having some removal. So it may be in the end that we trim like the Swiss spheres, and then it's just like a, a mid-range deck, right? And you play go for the throats. Could be that cut down's better in that one drop slot. Um, that's kind of conditional. I usually just like to try to play a bunch of like the new cards, get a feel, um, and kind of go from there. That okay, sounds pretty sweet. So we get to test how the Swiss here works out. We're gonna discard Black Cliff Cliffs here. And we draw Black Cliff Cliffs. <laughs> so I have kind of two options for next turn. Third path iconoclast. Let me see what they do here. So I can just shoot that. Or I have more power for next turn if they're doing like Grixis tokens. Because I do want, like, there's a good chance that they. Given that they're also tokens, we're going to put some damage there. Um, so I can do that. Next turn, I can play the three and a four. Because I want to kill their, uh, like, third class. this again i'm gonna hold these see what we draw i think we do this get a treasure at this point we flip I think we're just going to be mana efficient here. And we'll just pass the turn. Because this can deal two damage to things. And then having Fable. I want to save this for a post Kiki turn. Blocker. Okay, so you take out you, you go face, you go here, you also go here. Just deal damage there. Because now I have these dragons that both deal two each turn. So we get some value there. Get the menace. They've shown this saga that's a sweeper. Unless they have burn down the house. But they're using like diabolic intent. They could have burn down. Um, but I think... All things considered, it's pretty solid. Yeah, they have go for the throw, but...
They either go for the throat, the reflections, or I go to combat. Let's get rid of the blocker here. So they need to target something now. And now we just go face. 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 <laughs> Machine gun dinos! So even without the... Um, like the dragons, these are kind of self-enabling. Um, it's felt pretty solid, all things considered. I think lowering the curve was correct. I, I don't know if Swift Spear is necessarily still where we want to be. Um, it could just be something like Lightning Strike. Let's try that out, actually. Again, this part of the game is just trying out cards in slots. Because then I can like hit him at instant speed. It's like the biggest instant speed damage source. Strangle doesn't hit, unfortunately. Um... And then at least that goes face as well in a pinch. There is the one that's basically um, fight the deal three damage. You put a card to the bottom of your library, draw a card. That could be something we try out. It's just been scaled to also hit battles now, Planeswalkers uh, and the such. So that's another card we can look in that consideration. But we'll give this one one more, see how this plays out. I think we go first, we'll keep this. Hello, good game, give him a hello. Tell him a good game. Um, I don't exactly know what I'm discarding just yet, so I think we go... Invasion here. Ooh, these are all good choices. All good choices. I think I'm going to keep the Raptor. Because this turn I go Zia Torres. Okay, so given what we just drew. I did get the Tark here. Your belligerent. I'm gonna recast the spell, gains indestructible till end of turn. I think I actually wanna get this down. I'll target this one, it's just easier to flip. I'm afraid they're going to have removal. So I could jam this. I think we just jam. It's got the highest upside if they don't kill it. Yeah, let's see Edict. Probably just pop that then and get me a body. See, wedding announcement. So, because they showed the edict, you have trampled. Still think you're the best option. Because I can flip next turn. There's a chance they have Wandering Emperor or something. 
It might have been right if they have a second edict. Okay, well, that's a great start for us. That is very good, but I think we're actually going to keep that for afterwards. Uh, am I? Like, do they have farewell? If they have farewell, then it's kind of nasty. Get the dino here. I th think this turn... We can get this, it's a 4-3 trample. Or I can set up a different one. I think we set up a different one. Could have been right just getting this going. Doing this now gives him a weaker body. Obviously got a dodge wandering emperor here or farewell. It's an interesting game of like so the, the big thing I noticed, a lot of these are five, whereas if you could get it at the four mark, the, it, this flips it on its own, which has some utility. That's annoying. Because now that gets to five. We're just gonna go get our dino again, or our dragon. Next turn I can do a pump at least, so it has some value. I th think all things considered, I just gotta go face here, hope they don't have Wandering Emperor. Like one card in hand. So, do this. It gives me a blocker at least for the turn. Dino can be pumped. I, I just gotta be able to play around Wandering Emperor. Think here. We still have to do it like this. Because at least this can attack into a few. Let's see what we get here. So if they don't have an answer this turn, then I kill him in the air with Defiant Thunder Maw. Could be farewell. I should have probably counted. Well, I guess it doesn't matter.
Dinos! Bang, bang, boom, boom. All right, this deck was actually pretty sweet. Um, I think like these dragons really overperformed. Um, and then just kind of the mix, like you're getting spells with added abilities, kind of being able to target stuff uh, goes a long way. Um, so let me know what you think, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one.